Yes, your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another episode of My Two Cents. This morning we are looking at T-Mobile. Yes, they're launching it December 6th. It's right around the corner, a couple of days here uh, at the time of recording. They are launching their 5G network. We're going to look into the details of that. I know many of you are very concerned about 5G and the health effects it may have on the masses, but I mean, we, we're here and it is rolling out here in the United States, already prevalent overseas and in addition to that today we will be looking at what's going on with the fcc they just recently voted to ban any subsidies for huawei and actually zte the governmental subsidy program that was uh, going on here in the states that our tax dollars were paying for it looks like they voted to ban it so we'll take a look at that as well what do you what are your thoughts about that do you are you in agreement with trump's very aggressive behavior when it comes to huawei zte all these chinese companies taking advantage of um you know our, our markets and our networks let me know they are ahead of the game so is this going to help in leveling the competition again you guys let me know in the comments below but before we start if you guys find these types of videos informative make sure you like share and subscribe and click that bell to receive more videos like this before we get started let's take a look at what the markets did yesterday looks like we closed down another one percent on the dow jones and if you recall in my last two cents video, I talked about us breaking this area right here, the support area of 27,750. Well, we did that and we accelerated quickly uh, even lower. So at this point, our next area of support would only be maybe two or 300 points down at 27,242. So that's a level to look at if you're kind of uh, following the equity markets. Again, I've told you I no longer do. Um, it's just too too much rigging going on in that market rather just trade purely off of fundamentals in the fx and crypto markets though there is some manipulation there it's uh at least you can kind of weed through it a little bit better and the returns are much better so yeah that's where we are with dow jones this morning see how we open up in a few hours but i think on the political front i want to take a look at what's out of zero hedge regarding the fcc they voted a five to none to ban china's huawei and zte from government subsidy program so it says the fcc has voted five to zero on a new rule that would ban service providers from using government subsidies to buy chinese huawei and zte equipment reported Reuters, all five fcc commissioners voted for the ban at the friday meetings the new rule would prevent rural carriers from accessing an 8.5 billion dollar government fund to purchase Huawei and ZTE electrical components. The rule also states that carriers must remove and replace Huawei and ZTE equipment from existing networks. FCC chairman recently said approving the rule would be a matter of national security. He also said the Chinese governments could attack US networks if Huawei and ZTE equipment were the backbone of major communications networks. When it comes to 5G and America's security, we can't afford to take risks and hope for the best, he said. Here are some screenshots from the actual letter and decision. Uh, it says the economic decoupling of both the U.S. and China continues full steam. I have to agree with this. And, you know, again, I know people, it's a polarizing situation when it comes to Trump. But these are the types of things that I just don't see any other president doing because of the political ties uh, that they have with these Chinese companies, legal or illegal, you know. So um, I'm glad this is happening. You guys let me know your thoughts about this uh, my only concern or question would be why are they only doing rural areas uh, is this not a an issue in the urban and metropolitan communities i would love to know if you guys know anything about that leave those comments in the section below but again i think this is an excellent move by us we have to draw the line in the sand somewhere people we can't continue to let china just walk over us and at the same time compromise our security infrastructure again let me know your thoughts about this move i think it was an excellent one and ironically enough out of reuters um something on the other side of the pond we've got a south korea court upholds record fine against u.s chip giant qualcomm it says that a south korean court on wednesday upheld a record 873 million dollar fine against u.s chip giant qualcomm for unfair business practices related to patent licenses and modem chip sales rejecting the company's appeal against the penalty so it says that the ruling is a setback for Qualcomm as it battles customers over royalties and antitrust violations around the world, including an ongoing case brought by the U.S. Federal Trade Commission. So Seoul High Court judge rejected the company's appeal against the penalty 
imposed by the Korean Fair Trade Commission in 2016, saying that Qualcomm abused its dominant market position. And if you guys didn't know, Qualcomm is the world's largest supplier of mobile phone chips and derives most of its profits from a business segment that invents technologies and licenses them. Analysts are saying though that this ruling will really not affect or weaken Qualcomm's status in the market because we are heading into 5G era and Qualcomm is one of the very few companies that can manufacture 5G modem chips. So I'm assuming this kind of ties in with <laughs> the last article we just touched on from Zero Hedge regarding the FCC banning uh, Huawei and ZTE from the states, which I'm assuming will set up Qualcomm as uh, a big contender for this segment. So it may just be a great thing to have some Qualcomm stock. I'm not giving financial advice, but uh, if these types of rulings are gonna continue to happen, Qualcomm is gonna be one of the leading companies to benefit from 5G rolling out here in the United States. So as you can see, this is a battle. Verizon's CEO says he doesn't want this to be a 5G cold war between US and China, which it seems as though is happening. It says that Verizon's CEO told CNBC on Tuesday that it, he does not want geopolitical tension around 5G technology to become further inflamed. But just because you don't want something to happen, doesn't mean it won't. I don't see this type of tension settling down anytime soon, especially with added trade war negotiations. You add that in there, it's no way. It's no way. On top of that, Trump just signed. I don't know if you heard this. I, I talked about this in the previous two, My Two Cents video. Trump just signed a Hong Kong bill to back and uh, support the protesters in Hong Kong. So it's no way, no way at all that uh, the tension between China and America uh, is going to pipe down and, you know, this will only bleed into other areas like business when it comes to Chinese companies uh, versus U.S. companies. So the article goes on to highlight Huawei's biggest footprint in this 5G game, saying that the telecoms equipment maker is used in 45 of the world's 50 largest phone carriers. So this is not a company to play with. They have a big footprint, but I think, again, I'm glad to see the U.S. kind of standing up to these Chinese companies, Huawei and ZTE. And one more business headline to highlight today regarding 5G. We've got uh, two American companies partnering up. Verizon and AWS, which is Amazon, announced their 5G Edge computing partnership. So again, um, looking like that the uh, U.S. companies are stepping up to the plate when it comes to 5G. So we'll start to see some things come from these two mega companies in the near future regarding 5G. Uh, the 5G Edge architecture actually is uh, a framework for other companies to build 5G apps on top of. So, again, it's great to see this uh, rolling out. And they're going to pilot it in Chicago with a handful of high-profile partners, including the NFL and other game developers. But no details on the specific applications, but potential future use includes things like smart cars, IoT devices, AR and VR you know, the sorts of things that people cite when discussing 5G's life beyond the smartphone. So, yeah, it's good uh, good to see that happening. And again, I'm glad to see U.S. coming back strong uh, with the help of a culture that Trump has created here. And as far as uh, out of the White House, a no nonsense policy when it comes to China taking advantage of the U.S. You guys let me know your thoughts on that. But the last and final article for today is out of The Verge, and it is about this T-Mobile launching of their 600 megahertz 5g network across the u.s uh, but no one again can use it until december 6th which is around the corner it says that t-mobile has flipped the switch on its 5g network setting it live over areas of the u.s that it says covers 200 million people while the network is supposedly live today no one is going to be able to use it until later this week the first two phones that are supported on there will go on sale this friday the nationwide 5G deployment relies on a slower form of 5G using T-Mobile's 600 megahertz spectrum. This low band 5G essentially takes airwaves like the ones used by LTE and bundles them together with some new technology to deliver faster speeds. T-Mobile isn't offering any specifics on what kind of speeds you'll see on the new network and the actual improvements will vary a lot by location. So in some places they say 600 megahertz 5G will be a lot faster than LTE and others customers won't see much difference. So on Friday, again, the two mobile phones they'll be offering that will be able to take advantage of this 5G is the OnePlus 7T Pro, which I have to take a look at this OnePlus because I saw my man Lou from Unbox Therapy take a look at some OnePlus mobile phones. And I'm, I got to tell you, man, they are <laughs> they are really stepping the game up 
and you guys should take a look at some of those OnePlus mobile phones because you get a lot for the price. I'm telling you, you get a bang for your buck for sure. So the OnePlus 7T Pro 5G will be on sale for $899 and the Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G on sale for $1,300. Man, these phones are getting expensive. I'll leave a link below for uh, both of these. Uh, maybe you guys can shop and see if there are some Black Friday deals on that. But yeah, that's it. Um, you know, this is not the 5G that is really <laughs> already prevalent overseas, especially in China. But, you know, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, you know, AT&T got a lot of flack for calling their network 5G, uh, and it really wasn't. So this, I think, is closer to an actual fifth generation uh, network that T-Mobile is rolling out. So that's pretty much it, though. Let me know your thoughts about all of these topics touched on today. I'm glad to see America really taking back some of the exploitations that uh, China has been uh, taking advantage of for the last 10, 15, 20 years now. Let me know your thoughts again in the comments below. Again, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe if you found this video informative. And click that bell to be notified about upcoming videos like this. It's your boy Crypto Blood. That's my two cents. I'm out of here. How?